Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here with the next live base build video. Um, this is a series I did a while back and I'm recontinuing it. Today we're building a Town Hall 10 base from scratch. So the idea behind this is you guys not only see a good base, but you see how it's built and important for building bases of your own. Now a few things to say, first of all, I put out a poll on YouTube of what Town Hall level you guys uh, wanted to see and the highest response was Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11 was second, and I will cover Town Hall 11 soon in one of these videos. We're starting today with a Town Hall 10. Also, if you want your own custom war bases, um, I do have to give a shout out to my Patreon because I am a sellout and I have a Patreon and if, <laughs> if you wanna donate to the channel, you can get custom war bases in return, which are a little bit better than the base I'm gonna build here, just kind of, you know, in 15 minutes or so, just doing my best to kind of put together a decent base. Uh, they're a little bit higher quality, so check out my Patreon link in the description if you're interested. And having said all that, let's get into this base today. Um, Okay, first thing I like to do, and I'll just talk through as I build, is I like first designing the core, you know, CC. Um, I like having the sweepers in the core at Town Hall 10. Towers Expo, so let's go ahead and do an Expo. Um, I'll make it like this. See, there's different variations, of course, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll go like that, and then we'll also put, um, let's go ahead and put the queen off in the core too. Queen a little more central than than uh, I have in some other bases, but you know, this is just one of many types of bases. I do have my own kind of style though, I guess. Okay, so that core is pretty much done. We can adjust the air sweepers later. Now we're going to um, put the inferno towers down. And at a time like this, actually, it's almost nice to put the town hall down first. We'll go ahead and put it at the top of the base. This is just a reference point. That way we know, you know, which way the wall record will path, which way the battle blimp will path, which affects things uh, later on. Um, I'm feeling, let's do a one Inferno tower base, and then we'll do uh, one multi on the back end. The single Inferno is getting that wall wrecker. Um, we're going to go ahead and feature a little bit of dead space. What this does is it's tougher on minor pathing, it's tough on dragon pathing, and even for a kill squad coming through, now it has to get through two layers of walls. So I like putting a little bit of dead space in the base, especially on the front end, kind of by this single inferno. And in case the queen gets to the core, we want to put the uh, the inferno four tiles away. Um, it keeps it very separate from the core. That's a good principle rule to keep the uh, your, the inferno and other important defenses uh, separate. Okay, so having done that, uh, I'll put the multi inferno somewhere up uh, in like I'm thinking like in this range. And actually, I want to keep my queen closer to the multi. Just uh, oh, the queen disappeared somewhere. Um, I want to keep the queen closer to the multi. So many flags. Where did they put the queen? Um, where is my archer queen? Okay, this is weird. She like literally just disappeared. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish later, and then hit edit, and maybe she's back. Okay, that was really weird. Um, but I'm gonna put the queen closer to the multi inferno, just uh, in case there's like skellies on the queen. A little bit of coverage on the queen, perhaps, make it a little bit better for the base, I think. Um, and then we'll go ahead and actually feature a little bit of dead space uh, on this side. We'll make it a little bit of a different shape, but similar. Um, and then we want to have this two tiles away to get that same four tile distance from this wall inside the core here. Um, okay, having done that, I'm thinking we're going to want to put down our air defenses next. And um, I think for this base, we'll go ahead and have them relatively spread out. I think that's actually become better uh, at Town Hall 10. It makes Lalo a little easier, but it's harder on dragons, and you can have other good anti-Lalo things. So we'll put one air defense like right around this area. Um, we can go ahead and put one like here. Um, I'm thinking one kind of by this single, but a little bit of distance. Air defenses, I wouldn't put them right next to your infernos just because of the uh, the bat spell and how effective it can be. Um, and then we'll put, um, we'll go ahead and put one air defense here. And then we'll talk anti-bat spell a little bit later. We'll put it right around there. But let's keep filling in some compartments. We want to have this inferno compartment. Um, I think we'll go ahead and put it like this. 
once again keeping those ratios of either two or four tiles the two tile it makes it so bowlers can't target over the wall um, on this side the four tile is for the queen so those are the, the best ratios to put um, okay then we'll put another compartment out like this just start starting to fill in compartments. Want the inferno to be able to reach, prevent the queen walk on the outside. So it reaches the outside of the base very nicely there. Um, and then we'll just kind of have this compartment go off in that direction. Uh, just make it a simple three tile width. Um, as far as the top inferno goes, we have a few different options of what we can do here. Um, I'm thinking we're just going to want to have it kind of be one big compartment and. Um, one thing I like having is this little feature. It really allows the Inferno to cover a lot of the outside of the base. Just putting this little thing so the Queen can't shoot over the, uh, I think that's oh, one more. Uh, this way the Queen can't reach it from the outside, but it still has like maximum coverage. Um, so I'm a fan of kind of doing that little design there uh, on the compartment that has the multi Inferno especially. And we can put a Tesla farm there, which will be covered by the uh, Inferno Tower, which is pretty huge there. Um, okay. So now we will continue to fill in some more compartments here. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of a gap in our base. Um, actually, what we'll do is we'll do this. We'll put a, a compartment kind of radiating outwards here like that. We'll finish that compartment down. And um, we'll start to fill in some compartments over here. Now one thing that's nice is this size compartment like this where you have two defenses or two 3x3 three three buildings that fit and then one tile uh, empty between them. It keeps your base compact but it lets you put uh, um, it lets you put spring traps in between and it also makes it so the queen from the outside can't reach whatever's back here. Makes queen walks harder and whatnot. Um, and then we'll go ahead and this is actually an interesting little design, but we'll go ahead and do this, uh, which I think is kind of cool. We'll have this compartment go out like that. So this way that um, the Inferno has even more reach because um, things can wander in towards where the Queen is, but it's still very narrow there. So I think that's a nice little design. And then we'll go ahead and move that there, um, which is probably going to want to make us shift these walls back to prevent that. Uh, air defense from being too close to the outside of the base. Go up like that and finish like that. Uh, we can add more walls if needed in that area. Let's just, I like finishing in the walls very early on the base. Some people don't, some people do, but uh, I am one of those that do. All right, so we've done that now. Um, let's go ahead and I think we have enough walls to kind of make this its own thing as well here. We're going very heavy on uh, these wall separations by the multi-inferno, which is, I think, I think that's the place to do it if you're going to do it. Um, so we'll fill in the wall here. Apologize for the low-level walls. You know, farming isn't that much fun. Uh, so that air defense is compartment's pretty much good. And now what we're left with is maybe a little bit weak on the bottom here in terms of walls. But uh, what we can do is we can fill in that partially, it looks like. Now we'll step back, kind of evaluate if we want to change anything. Um, perhaps we're going to want to, because we're a little short on walls on the bottom, we might want to make an adjustment here and take some of these walls and just kind of complete this compartment. Um, not that big of a deal. And then I think we want to increase the... Uh, Actually, that, that's okay. We'll leave that compartment as it is. Then we'll just take a few of these walls. Um, we will finish that like that. And I think what we can do is expand this outwards a little bit. And I think that will, um, oops, can't quite do that. We'll have one extra wall to kind of use where we need. But this is the basic design of the base. And um, now that all the walls are down, it starts to kind of take the shape of a base more. The important things for those of you that are kind of getting new to base building is that the infernos are very separate. You also can't draw a line, like a wall wrecker push. It's just going to cut straight through your base towards the town hall. People are going to use the wall wrecker at 6 o'clock, of course, to be able to cut straight through the middle. They can't really get both infernos that easily. They're very offset from the core, which is what you want. Um, we also have some dead space. 
we'll talk a little bit more as we put stuff in that's going to make miners and dragons harder to use. Um, but let's keep going. Uh, I want to make this a relatively quick video, and that's how these, this series was intended to be. Okay, uh, Expos. I want to use these guys. They're pretty good anti-queen walk if you keep them protected enough, but we're going to use them. Uh, we'll use one there, and then we'll go ahead and use one uh, by the, by the Multi-Inferno. Um, I'd say we want to keep the king kind of away from a kill squad action, so in more of a remote location of the base. And I think in this case, uh, a good location for the king is going to be kind of down to the right here. So we'll put his altar there, fill in some wizard towers. We want to, now this is important because right away I can see people trying to use like a bat spell combination here. But we can kind of prevent that by putting a wizard tower over up here. That way it can just start to take out the bats if they stray from that air defense, but it won't be tanked by a Lava Hound in a Lalo attack. Um, and then also we can, um, how else do we want to go about doing this here? We can put a Wizard Tower, I'd say over in, we definitely probably want one down at 6 o'clock in this area, uh, just away from those air defenses. Um, I'd say one one here actually isn't a bad place, but I'm not going to put it there. I don't want to give up too much value to a kill squad at 6. So we'll go ahead and put the wizard tower over here. And then finally, um, this last wizard tower, a few different options, but we will keep it out here. Here I want to prevent a bat spell in this area because there are three air defenses, so we'll put it here. And un I understand that it can be tanked by an air defense, but what this is going to do is it's going to prevent bats from taking out this air defense, really. And if they want to, it's separate enough from the other two air defenses that if they target this area, the bats are unlikely to get all the way over here, especially with the multi inferno at least somewhat covering one of those air defenses. Um, we will put the bomb tower here, it's near the queen, also near the inferno, forces a heal spell for hogs. Um, put the other bomb tower probably over here, kind of protect the king from getting swarmed by like skeletons or something. Uh, then we will fill in, I like doing traps last personally, um, but once again that's kind of a pick your poison thing. We're going to move this one air defense one tile over. What that's doing is in case there's like some kind of queen charge through here, the queen can't reach the air defense from that compartment, so uh, healers will be will be shot down. That's something to think about for sure in all your base builds, because um, that this area is vulnerable to queen charge down at the bottom around 6 o'clock here. Um, going to move this one wizard tower out, and really what we want to do by this single inferno is put a lot of high HP buildings. This is going to make it difficult for a kill squad entry to really get through this area, and it's um, it's, a, it's just a good stopper to have down at six o'clock, uh, where you know there's likely to be like a wall wrecker push because that's where the wall wrecker is likely going to be used in a kill squad, and then keep the defenses a little bit away from that area. Um, so we'll put a cannon here. We will put a cannon. Let's do a cannon here, and. Um, just starting to fill in defenses. I like keeping archer towers kind of around the perimeter more or less. What that does is it prevents like, you know, baby dragons, minions from creating too easy of a funnel. Um, so we'll put an archer tower here. Um, let's see, archer tower. Yeah, we can put one there. It is touching the bomb tower, but I think we can get away with it for this time. Uh, put one up here like that. And then we'll have an archer tower on the outside of the base here. And then finally, I think we'll tuck one in. Um, let's put it in, ooh, decisions, decisions. Let's put the archer tower back there. We'll kind of stack up top uh, heavy with these archer towers. And then starting to fill in some more things. Now one thing is in case of a frozen witch attack, if bowlers get in the core, you don't want to give them these easy second bounces. So we're going to put a builder hut here. What that's going to do is it's going to prevent them from really bouncing off like a high HP building that might otherwise be there. Actually, we'll put it back here like this. That'll really prevent bowlers from doing anything because um, there's nothing to target there. And we're going to go ahead and just put a wall piece here. So it's keeping everything separate from the core, which is good. 
um, makes pathing harder and makes it harder for those boulder bounces. And by pathing, I mean pathing for like dragons, miners. All right, cannon. Um, we'll put a canyon up out here. I think that's a good place for it. And we will put a cannon. Let's see. Let's put one over here by the king. And let's just put one in this compartment right here. Okay. Um, and then we'll put a mortar here. We're trying to keep the base a little more porous in terms of defenses, um, leaving some space between everything. And what that does is it makes pathing harder for like the stone slammer, for hogs, for any defensive targeting thing. Um, this is just going to make it, par especially balloons too, um, it's just going to make the pathing just that much trickier. And part of that is using surprise Teslas as well to screw up pathing. Um, oops, got a wall by accident from somewhere. Here it is. Put that guy back. Um, and then we'll finally, we'll finish with our last mortar. Let's see, put one in the base, why not? Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and put one in the base there. Um, at this point, let's see if we can point our air sweeper somewhere. I think that definitely going up here, we wanna cover the top of the base. I think that's a likely location to have stuff coming in from. We have Inferno 2 air defenses up there. And then I think otherwise we can want to put the sweeper pointed the other way and try to cover some of the value over there, um, possibly from a stone slammer or any other kind of push coming from that area. Uh, dragons, I think, are going to path from there. Don't see anything coming from this side because there's that dead space, which will really prevent that from, uh, from being the pathing we see. All right, so um, there's a few more things to do. We're not going to put like all the buildings down at this point. Um, giant bombs. Actually, I guess we should fill in these empty gaps in the base. Typically, I do it with either like storages or just regular like elixir collectors and things. Um, but if you do put down your storages, put them at least close to the outside of the wall. Um, you don't want to give them away for free because they they take time and if people want to take them out to you know create a funnel you should make them have to do it while a defense is covering it so keep your storage is relatively close to your base uh, but we won't get into that too much uh, I like using a troll test let's go ahead and put that down um, in terms of other Teslas we want to look for spots for giant uh, to kind of make a giant bomb enforce a heal spell for hogs potentially so we'll put one here that'd be a good giant bomb location away from a lot of defenses so forcing an awkward heal is part of it um, but like I said, a good little mini Tesla farm is up here. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to um, be in a good location. The pathing's kind of weird. It's like a weird little circle of defenses around here. But also if, you know, a Sui King pop the ability, the barbs are all going to die to that multi-inferno. So keep that in mind. Uh, put down these giant bombs. Like I said, this is a good location. Keeping them away from places where people are going to use heals, like bomb towers, big clusters of defenses. Generally speaking, we'll put one in the core just to, um, in case they're not under anything in, in there, not under heal. We want to make sure that they can't get any value. Um, around the outside is good generally for witches, so we will. We'll slide this over like that, and we'll put this one here, far enough away from the bomb tower that the heal is going to be awkward if hogs are in that area. Um, and then we got two more. I think it's worth having one by this single inferno. And then I think finally um, a good location is over here. All right, uh, spring traps, this is pretty basic. Um, generally want to favor them towards the town hall side because that's less likely for a kill squad since the wall record can't be used over there. Uh, but we do want to put them on the outside of the base for witches, generally speaking, because they can knock off some witches. Um, we can put like one over here. Um, we'll put put one in this compartment then one down at six o'clock wish i had a few more opportunities to put them on the outside but it's not that big of a deal we have enough giant bombs and stuff on the outside um seeking air mines how about that well first we want to prevent a suey battle blimp or something at six o'clock and even though we have the single inferno just want to safeguard it with a seeking air mine there um also definitely want to put one in this area just because um no air defense coverage, a stone slammer could be used. We'll put one back here by the uh, the multi-inferno to help protect that area. And then we got two more that are a little bit more free. We have some uh, leeway with how to use them. So we'll just kind of double up down here. 
and um, I think this way we're very protected at six o'clock, which is good. I think finally this area, we'll put one by this air defense in case there's a Lalo into it. And generally speaking, it is a little bit weak in this area, um, especially because the wizard tower is right next to that air defense, which isn't generally very good. Um, red air bombs, these are typically to get balloons. I think a good place to put at least one is in this area. There's no air defense coverage. Also by this wizard tower here. Um, we'll put one down here. We'll put it by the single inferno back a little ways but over away from the air defense so a Lava Hound pop won't do anything. Another one by this wizard tower. And I think we'll go ahead and double up a little bit towards the core here, really go strong towards the bottom. I could see a Lalo in that area with the kill squad up at 12. Um, okay, a lot of stuff. Um, finally, these small little bombs. I like kind of scattering them around the outside to, uh, to kill skeletons, possibly wall breakers. Um, Skeletons is the wrong word. Like the, 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 when the witches hit them, the skeletons next to the witches die as well. Um, so it, it kind of breaks up witches as they move along the outside. As soon as a group of witches hits them, all the nearby skeletons die, so the witches often get targeted. Also can help kill barbarians if the king's used on the outside, which he very much often is. Um, so we'll finally we'll finish with putting just a few. Uh, I like ground skellies right now. I don't think air skellies are very strong. So we'll just kind of spread out some ground skellies in the area. I'm not going to go too in-depth, um, too much to talk about today. But I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to, to do for this video. I uh, went long as usual as to be expected for this type of video. But here's a base um, that I guess you can copy if you want. Not saying it's a great base, but I think the process is there. And I hope this video helped. Like I said, check out the Patreon if you haven't already. Just to summarize a few... Uh, things we did in this video that I want to point out that are important for those of you getting involved in base building. Uh, keep the infernos separate from the core, keep those gaps, uh, keep the um, keep some dead space around your core. That's for bowlers. Um, you don't want them to have too much value if bowlers get into the core. They don't want them to take out every single building in all the surrounding compartments. And also for pathing for miners and dragons, you don't want them to path too smoothly into the core. You want it to be very choppy and have a lot of bottlenecks and stuff like that going into your core. So that's another thing, pathing around the core, inferno tower spread, um, and then all the basic stuff in terms of where you're putting your air defenses, wizard towers, keeping the rules where the queen can't reach stuff, where bowlers can't reach stuff. So yeah, hope this video helped and uh, we'll be doing a Town Hall 11 one and hopefully some other Town Hall levels if you guys like the series. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll be sure to check that out and I'll see you guys next time. Bisectatron out.